You have recently, with Carolyn, launched the Grand Connection Business Networking Community. Can you tell us a little bit, just a little bit, about that? Well, Carolyn and I were in um, Arizona. Well, I was in Arizona in March, and I had was working on a website with a client, and it turned out Carolyn was the doing the inspired business plan for them. We ended up connecting on the phone. We have been colleagues and friends since about 23 years. We had not seen each other in 12 years. And we had this phone call. I said, you know, Carolyn, there's, I've got this extra ticket in Arizona. She ended up jumping on a plane, met me in, in Sedona for this festival that got canceled and we went to the Grand Canyon instead. So from there, we came up with this idea that we wanted to create a community that would help businesses with digital transformation. COVID was just starting in March, middle of March. It was around March 14th or so, 13th, and everything was starting to close down. The Arizona had just declared the day Carolyn arrived, Arizona, a state of emergency. And we, at the time, weren't sure how we were going to get home. All worked out okay because we are at home now. And we came back, started running networking events, started looking for different speakers that could help us grow digitally in this new world especially with video technology, Zoom, many meetings, our early meetings were pretty rough. Uh, we're all learning and all of our members are learning. Just like here at BBN, we're all just starting to do more online and it's a different world. It's changed. And that's what the Grand Connection's for, is to help us all grow online. Thank you. <clears throat> Audience members, if you have questions for Susan, please type them into the chat. And at various points during her presentation, I will pose your questions uh, to her. Uh, Susan, are you ready to rock the stage? Yes, I'm going to stand now, so get my desk at the right height, and I'm going to share my screen. All right, take it away. Audience, let's give Susan a digital warm, warm, warm welcome. Hello. <laughs> it's different than a real audience. That's the one thing about digital. Well, are we ready to boost our sales with a winning website? I know all of us are. Um, what we're going to cover today is just a little bit on the history of web design. I want to learn a little bit more about you, although I've learned a phenomenal amount in, in our introductions. I'm going to go through eight principles of web design that you need to know. Then I'm going to talk to you about some questions we need to think about with our customers and how to make the website more engaging for them. Then we will talk about how to make visitors engage and convert. Very important for keeping people on our site. And the longer they're on the site, the more they trust you. And the more they trust you, the more they will consider converting into real customers. And how to turn our website at the end into a marketing engine that gets you results. Now, I want you to first know we've got two mindsets here. Your website is not static. It's always going to be changing. And what you're going to be doing is fine tuning it. I heard many people saying how, you know what? Things have changed. I'm, I, I now know I need to do a little bit more. A lot has changed in the last few months for people. And things are always changing all the time. Customers change, business change, your business markets change, your content changes, the technology is changing, and the world is changing. So we're always going to be updating it. And the second mindset is, is that your website is a tool. It's not a promotional item that just sits there. You wanna see it as the full tool that it can be. It, and I say, and I'm hoping by the end of this talk, it is most likely the most important marketing tool you have. I know for me it is. Myself and my website, that is my business. And it does my marketing, it does my sales, it does my customer support, and it also holds all the information of my site, like product information. I'm always looking things up on there. My privacy policy, my COVID plan, and it's used by many people and it's used by new leads, existing customers, me, my, my mom, <laughs> she looks things up. She's always looking up the address on there. So it's, it's there for all of us. And it can also hold the products that you have, your worksheets, um, instruction manuals, digital downloads. And for some businesses and more growing now, your website is your business product because it is an online course or a membership site. So that is your website. Now, building an effective, an effective website is a lot. It is a big job. And, you, you know, it's very hard to do it in a day. So don't get overwhelmed by this and leave. As Roger said, we should all stay till the end. 
I'm here to help you get through this. And we're also here afterwards at places like the Grand Connection for us all to learn about web, web development and getting through this. So what do I mean by a winning website? With a winning website, you want visitors to your, get visitors to your site to stick around, learn about you, absorb information, and take action. When user engagement is high, your, on, your audience will become more loyal and you're gonna get more return visits and higher conversions. So at this point, your website just works. And I'd love for you to share in the chat some of the things you are doing or you think you need to do to make a winning website because this chat we can all save at the end and it's a great resource for all of us because we're all learning all the time. Now while we're doing this I'm going to go on a trip back in time to 1991. This is when the world web was first announced and the first website was in 1992. Now what I was doing at this time was I was 21 years old and I had just gotten back from a trip around the world. I had been traveling with my best friend. We met Mother Teresa, decided we weren't gonna be missionaries and started a fair trade import business. And what we did was way different when, than what you do now to order. We had to fly to Bangkok, go to trade shows, go meet different suppliers of products, come back home with a suitcase full of samples, go through customs, which was often challenging when you have a bunch of silver jewelry in your bag, come back home, then we would write out our lists and fax orders over to our supplier. And who remembers the fax machine? Do you remember that thermal paper? Was that not horrible? And it would run out halfway through and you'd have to get them to fax. This, is, this took a lot, a lot of time to do. The things that I was doing back then took, I would say a hundred to a thousand times more, were more difficult than it is today to sell. So it's exciting for all of us. Then we got, search search came about 1993 then this was search then was with just little links and they were directories it wasn't search like we have today that's indexing and going through all the websites on the world and in 1993 we had our first landing page mtv 94 ads started coming in 96 this is the year i had my first website so this is CNN's website. My website actually, I think looked a little nicer than CNN's because I had pictures on it. I put on pictures. It was, I was actually, I was doing in my MBA program and I was in a manage, information management technology course and there were some programmers and we decided we would try as an experiment to build a little website that would sell my jewelry. And we put up some pictures, put up a few pages and I posted it, we had the prices. You couldn't order online. So you just had to, there was an email, and this is early days emails. I think it was my first email was when I was at SFU. I, we got, um, I posted the website in AOL, American Online Directory, and I got an order from South Africa. And then I got another one from Australia. And I think he, people were just practicing and playing, and it was fun. And these were big orders because I was a wholesaler. So they were like three or $4,000 orders. So it was very exciting. And I figured out a way to drop ship the stuff with the supplier doing all of this by fax machine. It took probably three months to arrange the deal and they wired me the money and I sent the inventory and they got their orders and it was fun. Flash came about, which made animations start happening on the screen. Then in 1998, who's heard of this company? Who wishes they invested? <laughs> I know I did. Yes, Google came about. And then 1999 to 2000, PayPal. At this time, everybody was still pretty much scared about ordering online, right? Do you remember that? I'm not going to use my credit card to pay for something online. Now, who orders online? I think a lot of us are ordering online, right? I know I am. And, and so was my mom. And then came blogs. Now, this was a big, big, big shift for small business. Because finally, what used to be technology that we couldn't, um, you know, you couldn't afford, only the big, big companies were doing big websites, that in, with blogs, you could, you could have through WordPress your own blog and start getting content and start reaching people around the world. Experts could start to reach people and you could start getting people to find you through search. Now, at this time, I had another business. My kids were young and I decided I wanted them to be math enthusiasts, so I started a business that taught children math through music. It was after the baby Einstein stuff. I don't know if anybody had kids and had those DVDs, but all of us, me and all my colleagues thought, yeah, we could do something that's gonna, gonna be better than that and Disney's gonna buy us out. 
Anyways, Disney didn't buy it out, but it's still willing, uh, it's still selling on iTunes. So at this time for websites, I set up a simple site. We're using Dreamweaver and HTML. Anyone use Dreamweaver? And it was, it was fairly simple, but then I moved over to a CMS called Drupal. Drupal is a CMS that at the time I thought, I bet that it was gonna be bigger than WordPress, but it didn't. WordPress actually grew way more than Drupal. So with the, with the CMS though, I was able to keep adding content quickly. And I grew this site to thousands and thousands of pages. And at that time it was article marketing, um, guest posts, sharing content. The SEO was phenomenal on that. And I had up to 25 million visitors for some of my contests. So this was the power of article and content marketing in the early days. Then we start getting social media. And yeah, and back there, see that's not a typo. Let me go back. It was called the Facebook. They're now Facebook, they dropped the the. Mobile era starts, here's the first iPhone. And then in 2008, I decided to start helping my musician friends go online because the music industry from my, music, my musical business was changing. We weren't able to sell our CDs anymore. Everything was being copied, it was moving digital, the price of CD, the digital music was going down. So we started doing websites for other musicians and then I moved into doing websites for everybody at that time. Now, at this time, I would meet people at a party and they go, you know, I don't need a website. Do you ever hear that anymore? I think everybody knows now you need a website. Then we started moving in as the mobile devices came and the tablets, it started moving into the need for responsive web design. And this came in 2010. Originally, prior to this, you were building a web, a different web, a different um, web, not a website, but a different um, uh phone app for the phone, a different app for the tablet, and a different one for the, the desktop. And with responsive web design, it was a big shift. Now we could actually build one site that would work on all devices. And this has been a time saver and a cost saver for small business, incredibly. Then social starts happening. We got more backlinks happening, but it's about the inbound marketing here. And with getting your content out on social, you can start bringing people back to your website. And that's how some of you guys have been mentioning things about, I want to get more traffic, good content. That's how you get more traffic. Focus, niche, good content. And now we are here today, 2020. It's the time of COVID and the world has shifted. I heard on a podcast last week that Bill Gates was speaking on and he said, we have had 10 years worth of digital adoption in the past five months. Just think about that. What does that mean for us? It's changed. My mom, who never used the internet, is ordering her food online. She is doing her yoga online. Her book club, book club is online. And she's, she's ordering yoga pants. If my mom's online, we all need to have a website. A website is no longer a luxury. It's a necessity. And I know everybody here knows that because you guys all will all of you have websites and we're all working to make them even better. So I think I know this answer, who is a website, right, Roger? Because we've already gone through that. I would like to ask you what platforms you're using. And Roger, if you want to share with me anything from the chat. You're on mute. Audience, can you please answer Susan's questions and type it into the chat? Uh, WordPress. WordPress, Wix. Wix, okay. WordPress, 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 WP, or WordPress. That's WordPress. Uh, Domain.com. Uh, Martin's website is Word, uh, WordPress. Okay, so we, it's mostly WordPress. Yes. So there are various tools to build your website. We have heard of WordPress already, and I think somebody said Weebly or Wix in there. There's a Wix and yeah. there's a one front page. Oh, front page or square page? This square page? No, it says front page yeah. from Perry. Okay, so we, um, these are web builders. So there's a difference between a WordPress and Drupal and Joomla. Those are content management systems, or you might see CMS. And what they are is, is that you end up downloading the software onto your own server, and then you set up the database and then you add the content to it. The software 
is free. WordPress is an open source software platform. So you can get, you get it for free, but it does cost some time to set it up. When you use a, a web builder, you can get on right away. It is on their servers. So you're running it on their servers. And it's a little bit like, like using Duplo versus the full Lego kit. It's very easy to get going, but it has some limitations when you grow your business that it can't do all the functionality that, that WordPress could do. But it's very good when you get started. And it's a great way to experiment and learn because you can do it yourself. Now, I always get asked about the difference between what's a theme and a template. And I will recommend to you, if you're thinking about, you know, doing a new website to go to the Envato market and look at themes, because that gives you an idea of what people have done. And they're, they're, the newer themes are very modern. They have a lot of animation on them and it starts to give you an idea. You may not use it exactly, but it gives you an idea of what's out there. And it's a very good tool to do at the beginning of getting a new website. So WordPress is like getting the full, full Lego, all a whole set, but it's organized. When you download WordPress, you're downloading software that's set up and ready to go. The only thing is it doesn't have a theme. So a theme that you use, some of you might be using Avada or Divi theme, that's very, very popular. A theme is like the look. So your theme could be a Disney theme, Frozen theme, Princess theme, or you could be having the Star Wars theme. So that's what a theme is. You could be picking the different themes. So it'll make the look throughout the site very much that theme. Now, if you wanted to get a different plugin of, or a different template, a different template would be like buying a different Star, a different Star Wars ship. So that change, that's getting a different template within the theme. So it's a different structure and a different layout in the same theme. And then plugins like WooCommerce, that is the shopping plugin for WordPress, that is like buying something to add to the big kit. So you're adding in a shopping kit or here adding in some other tools on your website. And there are thousands of plugins you can use. And I'm going to talk mostly about WordPress because WordPress is what most of us are using. But I, I, I am very, um, I'm very confident in, in all of the web builders. They all do a great job. WordPress right now. And I don't know if you remember when I was talking to you, there was a, when it first started out that year, there was only 2,000 sites. Now there's over 455 million. It's 60% of the market share and it has over 55,000 plugins, which means if you need to grow and find something different to do, like right now there's online membership programs that you can integrate Zoom into. So there's a lot of stuff out there that WordPress has that's new and staying up to date because WordPress has the biggest community of adding open source software to it. So you're always getting new resources added to it to use. Now, coming to your website, I wanted to talk about the three things we wanna to get to your website. The first thing is you wanna get found. The second thing is you wanna make sure it works. Have you ever seen this when you arrive at a website? So you've got to get found, you've got to get work. And then after that, we want to look at what we have on our website that meets the needs and actually sells. And I call this a winning website. The other thing is with a website, you really only have one time to make that first impression. So it's important that your website does represent you well, and it's something you're proud of, and it's not going to have people leaving and not come back. So I'm now going to go into some principles of web design. And I hope that some of these will sort of give you some ideas when you're looking at your website that you can think whether or not you've been following the principles. The first is know your customer. And I like this picture because this little clothes pin is just sort of a friendly looking, looking customer like all my customers are. And then the other clothes pins remind me of the customers that I am maybe the wrong ones, the ones I'm, I'm, I, I'm maybe trying to market to, but they're not really my ideal customer, or the ones that are not, are, uh, don't have the budget for what I'm doing, or they aren't, they aren't costly customers, they're high maintenance customers. So finding your ideal customer and knowing them is very important in designing your website. The second thing when we get started is I ask people, after I've asked them, well, who's your customer? What is the purpose of the site? In general, most sites, I'm just gonna put them out here, they are used to describe some sort of expertise, 
build your reputation, generate leads, and use for sales and aftercare. But we can get in deeper. When we go into a conversation, what's the purpose? Are you going to sell something? You got products to sell? Are you educating things? Are you building trust? There's so many ways we can build trust. And I welcome you to share some of the ways that you are building trust in the chat so that we can all get some ideas from that. The third thing is brand. And brand is so much more than your logo. It's your look and feel. It's the fonts, the type of images, and the words you use. It reflects your voice. What are you about? Many of us are solopreneurs, right? Who's here as a solopreneur? I know, I know from our list where most, most of us are. And we ourselves are our brand. So we have to put a great about us. We need our, our story, our mission on the website. Those are important things that reflect who we are, as well as great photos. That's really important. And then even part of your brand is bringing in the right testimonials that will reflect who you are and the work you do for your customers that resonate with your customers. Number four, this is so, so important. And this is kind of like the Marie Kondo of, of web design, simplicity. I, I myself have to, and I need to do this right now, it's just like every year you gotta go through your website and clear out stuff because it's getting too busy. And this happens because we add more to it, just like our clothes closet. We're always adding in more, more to the website and we don't stop and say, oh, I should take that off. Now you can go in deeper and keep information in a deep level, but your homepage and your landing pages should be simple and clear. And this includes the color, the type, the images, keeping them simple. Apple is a phenomenal example. Now, the one thing that differs from Apple than us is Apple is a well-known brand and many of us are not as well-known as Apple. This is, so when you aren't as known as well-known, you need to tell people what you do and, and what audience you're trying to reach because Apple just knows us and we know them, but the, the simplicity of it is phenomenal and it's a great starting point to get ideas. Oh, that was the website. I clicked on the wrong one. Layout, number five. So layout has changed a lot over the last year and you'll notice now websites are full width and they're in blocks. This is since um, different layout called Gutenberg layout that they actually can now, the Gutenberg editor in WordPress allows you to actually put in blocks. And you'll notice now websites are all blocked. They're section, 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 right? And this has changed a lot. But what you wanna do with your layout is you wanna plan it out. That's why I say go to a place like Envato, look at other people's websites, look at the newer ones to see, because a lot of the older ones are narrow and you're really gonna have, wanna have a wider one that fits the bigger screens that most people are using. There's also a lot of animation now that you can do on, the web, on your website. And you know, if somebody comes to me and says, I wanted to do like, go like that. I want that thing to pop in like that. We can just add code that will make it do that. So you don't have to buy a template that does that. You can find another one and we can add things to it like that. Navigation is very important. When you have your navigation, those are all like your menu button. We want to have it simple, intuitive, consistent. The overarching rule is users should know where they are, where they have been, go where they are going on your website and where they have been. And when we start off, we always like to have a site map to get us going. Now, who here has heard about the F shape? Anybody? We're seeing anyone, I can't see all of us here. Let's see if I can see us. Anybody's heard about the F shape in web design? Nobody? Well, this has been studies. I'm just gonna say that it's less, it, a lot of people think they need to design because it's so popular in, 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 in the blogs online and articles, but this is based on text. So people end up reading across, across, down and across, but this is very text heavy. Most of our sites have less pictures or have more pictures, so that means that we don't need to follow this rule as much anymore. And I've got some quick tips about the F, dealing with it if you're kept text heavy, is, is that you include most of the stuff, at, important things at the top and chunk it and put things into bullets and lists because what? People actually don't read everything, they scan. And the big thing, cut out unnecessary content. The sixth thing is visual hierarchy. This is thinking about what is the most important things on the page. 
when I meet with a client, the, I, another thing I'll ask is what's the most important thing for you? And sometimes what you think is important may not be what is important. So you need to think what's most important for my clients, for my customers when they come. And you decide where you're going to put it on the page. There's some things that need to be on every page, like your, your buy buttons or your, your join buttons. So the, the large, the ones that are the call to actions should be on your either your header or the footer or a pop-up so that people see them on every page on your site. And your visual hierarchy, you can change how it looks by things like color. Um, your red button will stand out or the texture or a border. Like you can have buttons or images and you can put a little bit of texture by them and that will make something look a little bit more important. And the other thing that's new now is motion. You can just take the button and you can have it that it just goes a little jiggle. You know, when you scroll down the page and it jiggles, that makes something stand out. So that's using visual hierarchy to do that. Number seven is a biggie. And this is what we spend the most of the time, most of the time on when you're doing a website. And this is what you're doing too, is you're going back and looking at the content you need. You can take a screenshot of this. This is a good one to keep. Um, when you're going through the content, there's so much and it gets overwhelming. When I start a web project, we start off with the home page because that is the most important page. And then, then from that, the rest of the site will flow. And this is where it's very important to understand your customer and the language that resonates for them. And think about words that you could use like power words, um, get, join, be the first, claim. And I have at the end of this, I'm going to be giving you um, some links to resources. And one of them are lists of power words that are great to use on your website. Not one, you, your, your power words will be different for each audience but it gives you an idea and you can think what will work well. The other thing that's good is quotes from other people. If you, this is a quote here, speaking of quotes from other people, the one with, with content, Winston Churchill said, if you want me to speak for two minutes, it will take me three weeks of preparation. If you want me to speak for 30 minutes, it will take me a week to prepare. If you want me to speak for an hour, I'm ready now. Actually, it took me more. I wasn't ready now. I did prepare for this, <laughs> this hour. <laughs> but the main thing that Winston is telling us is, is that it is much harder to get your content concise. And it's, you have to put in the time to think through and how to make it say more in less. And the other thing is you can use pictures and you can use video. And you can go, go deep with read mores. And you can also do another thing we do a lot if you're too, you really have to have more content is you can expand the content and contract it on the pages. So it's not always showing or do a click where you would hover over. That helps us with a lot of content. And the eighth thing is about performance. And this is where if your site isn't performing, if it's slow to load, it doesn't work on a phone, you've got a bad hosting and it's down half the time, you're losing customers, seriously losing customers. So you need to check your website, check that the links are working. You can run, run something that will actually show you where you have dead links. Check your forms. Your forms will break occasionally because even if you haven't touched your website, your website is sitting here and then the forms or the, the rest of the world changes around it, the browsers, the, the plugins that you're using, they get updated through WordPress and things can break. So you need to put in your phone, put in your calendar, stick it in there, a notification at least once a month to test your forms on your website. I have had people come to me and say, you know, I'm not getting any leads. I don't understand why. And I said, have you checked your forms? And it turns out that the form had broken and there was some new API came out or their server had done some configuration settings and they had, had broken. So always be testing that. The other important thing for performance is SSL to make sure you have your site secure locket on your website so that you don't get the warnings from other browsers like Google that say that this site isn't secure. That will stop a lot of people coming through to your site. And I throw SEO under here and I know some of you had asked about SEO in your talk. We won't talk a lot about it. I have a whole talk on that as well. And it's just another whole it would take a couple of hours. But SEO is certainly important and the things you need to do on your website can increase your traffic. And the other thing that increases your SEO is just 
having people stay on your website longer and having more people linking to your website, the inbound traffic and the inbound links. And marketing is measuring. So if you aren't measuring it, this is the second thing I want you to do today that's super important besides putting in a calendar to check your, check your forms. You should also, oh, another thing to do for your calendar is to put in the date that your domain renews. I have had so many clients that ask me, call me up, their website is down and it turns out they didn't renew their domain and they lose their domain. So make sure you know when you're, all of your assets, make sure you know when your hosting ends, your domain ends, be organized on those things. And get Google Analytics and Google Search Console right away. Because if you aren't measuring it, you cannot improve it. And this will tell you the goals. You can get set up goals in there and you can know your goals with sales, signups, calls, your bounce rate, it'll tell you your average time on the page and unique visitors. It gives you a lot of information. And it's much easier when we're talking about conversions to double your business by doubling your conversions than by doubling your traffic. I don't know if this number is exactly right, but this is what Jeff said. Conversions happen when someone completes an action on your site. So I invite you to share with me in the chat, chat. what is a conversion for you? Anyone? Roger, if you want to, is anybody putting anything in? Some of them are like signing up for a newsletter, getting a sale, anything else? Sharing something on social media, people track that. That's a, that's a, could be counted as a conversion. Buying something. Uh, sale intake form, asking yeah. for info. So requesting, requesting info. Forms or conversions, you're tracking that. It, it is leading to a sale. And you can have different levels of conversion. So you can have a conversion is a measurement, right? So you can have my conversion for people coming from my, I've got AdWords going on, on Google. They come into the site, I'm converting them. That's one conversion, how they got there. Then I have how many people filled in the form. Then I have how many people bought something. So you can track the conversions throughout and you start seeing how your sales funnel is going. Devin is saying a uh, meeting, arranging meetings, I think is what she means. Yeah, booking a meeting, that's a conversion for sure. That's a great one. Like, cause con meetings in person have way higher conversions than somebody doing something, a, an email on a website. So that's a good one. Uh, leaving an email, uh, uh, trading a, a mag lead magnet for a, for a first name yeah. and e an email address. Yeah, so the, all of these are conversions and you wanna be tracking the different ones and knowing, because they're ultimately, we're, we're wanting them to be, turn into a sale. Martin has two conversion goals, subscribing to my newsletter and purchasing an ad. So when you arrive at your website or another site, um, what you want to think about, and I, this is a great exercise to do and try to, you could do it with your own. If you can go as an open-minded alternate perspective or go to somebody else's site and what makes you leave. This is a great way for thinking about what converts and what doesn't convert and what I want to do with my website. So the big thing that makes me leave a site besides performance issues, if the site is slow or not working right, I'm gone, right? couple of seconds to, too long to load. If it's more than five seconds to load, half the time you've left. So you want your site loading in three to five seconds. The other thing is if I don't think this, I'm the right audience. So if I land on a site and it looks like it's a bunch of kids stuff, because I'm my children are older now and I've got kids in their 20s, I'm, I'm leaving. But if the pictures look like me, it's my audience or the things I'm buying for, I'm more likely to start reading. The other thing is, is if the messaging, if they um, makes me leave, is when I have. What am I trying to say? I don't know what they do. So when I get to a site and you, it's not clear. So you get there and you're going. They got a pretty logo. It's some sort of a name. You, the name doesn't match the business, and you're not sure. So if you don't know what they do, that's another thing that's going to make people leave. So do this and go through different sites to see. We have. If we want to understand our customers, we need to ask the right kinds of questions. And knowing your customer is super important. So one of the things I'd said we would talk about is these questions that are really good for your customers. I look at it on two sides. I look at it as understanding the customers. So this is 
knowing who my customer is, what are their problems and pains, what is the m going to motivate them the most, and why do they need your product or service? And then after you've got these things, why do they choose you? If you can understand these from your own customer, it can help you understand what's going they're going to do and what, what they need on their website and what you need to put on that website. And then try to go, just as I had the picture of the guy, go into the, become the customer's point of view. What's he or she thinking when they would arrive at your site? And this is a great thing to get other people you know to come to your website and give you that bird's eye point of view from somebody else, a different perspective. Because when I arrive at a site, this is what I'm going through. I'm going through. I want to know who you are. I want to know what you do. I want to know how you can help me or are you solving my problem? And this is me. I want to know about me, why I want to trust you and how I can work with you or buy with you. And these actual principles are the very same ones we want to do when we're introducing ourselves. So many times you arrive and you don't get that trust or you don't know even how to buy from some, it's not clear. Are you a coach or do you have a, do you have a online program? Um, how do I book your time? It's not clear. So a lot of businesses um, need to think about how they can make these, these, how do you work with you very clear. And I've also seen this in emails. When people will send an email, they actually say at the footer in their signature now, it's very common how they can work with me and it's super clear. And what you can do using your website as a tool is actually link to those parts of your website and use your signature in your website and other things on social to link back to information that summarizes these things on your website. And then you can always be changing your website, which is nice. You have it all in one place. Susan, are you ready for two questions? Okay. Fumi wants to know, do you have any major effective alternatives to Google tools? Google Analytics? Hey, his question is Google tools. I think he means Google Analytics. So um, I use Google Analytics and Google, Google Webmaster Tools the mo all the time. Sometimes you will have in your web builders, they will have tracking and there are some plugins, I I'm, I'm can't name them off at the top of my head that will add to tracking on your website. I know you can get certain things if you have banners and things on your ad that you can actually track some of the stuff for your, for your advertisers. So those are kind of things you can add there. And different builders will have their own dashboard. But there, there's Google Analytics is by far the most powerful one out there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Aro said, do you offer a website review and your suggestions? Question yeah. mark. I'll talk to you guys about that at the end. Okay. And then I've got a question. Yep. Uh, at the, uh, in, in, the, in my signature of every email, there is a image and uh, uh, that image, if you click it, goes, takes you to my website, but nobody ever clicks it because it's not apparent that it's a, it's a link. How can I let people know that it's a link? Well, it doesn't probably, you're not, I, I mean, you can, in a website, it, you would have, you could have something, that's a, that's an email. In the website, you can have something that will hover over so you get a feeling. You'll know it's a hover over and it's a link. You can set that. But on, an, on your signature, I haven't seen anything that does that yet. I would still have your link for the website in the rest of your text as well and then have that linking too. So you have it in both places. Okay. Thank you. And I'm going to share my screen back to my nice. No, no further question. My nice forest here. I'm getting calm. The other thing when we talk about conversions, we want to talk about engagement. And they're, they're very closely related. Engagement builds trust. And when people trust you, that increases conversions. So we're working towards strategies for conversions and strategies for engagement all in one. Now, this is something we can share too, is what do you do to make your, your website more engaging? And or what kind of engagement would you do on somebody else's site? Things that are engaging often are videos, um, watching videos, viewing images. Images are more engaging than long, long, long things of text. 
um, visitor comments people add, but a lot of times we take them off because when you have no, there's sort of there's a balance you're doing because when you have comments enabled, it allows for engagement, but if nobody comments, it looks really bad. And then you also get a lot of spam coming through. So we always, usually, unless you're really, really high traffic, we take off the comments. But it does create engagement. Um, leaving a review, social sharing, those social share buttons are good for engagement because, and make them the good ones that, that are very easy and frictionless for people to, to engage with. One of our goals in web design is making that funnel through the conversions frictionless. How easy can it be? Someone, easy content, easy to read. It doesn't take me long to figure out what you do. It's easy to navigate in your website. And then when you're coming to thinking about buying, finding out how I can work with you easily and I know exactly what package or what product or service is good for me. All these funnel through to better conversions. Now, I'm just gonna recommend some books which are part of my Bible here. Um, the author, Susan Wenshank, she is a psychologist and she has studied the psychology of websites and what makes people click. She also does a lot on conversions and other things. And she works with Fortune 500 companies to help them increase their, their marketing and their conversions. And actually, we're talking about having her as a guest on one of our events. So that's exciting with the internet the way it is now in a global thing that you can reach out to people and connect with them online and then have them join us in events on Zoom that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to have. So those books are good. And one of the things she said is we get 40 billion inputs every second. And does anybody, anybody know how many we actually absorb consciously? You can put it in the chat if you know. Roger will tell me later if anybody got it right. 40. So 40 is unconscious. It's like an iceberg. There's this part that we are aware of consciously and there is so much more underneath that's unconscious. And that's why when you're doing web design, part of it is very intuitive. And when you've been shopping and using the website online, you know what works. That's why I say, go and see how you experience other people's websites. Cause you're gonna say, yeah, I don't like that. I don't want that on my site. She talks about the three brains, the new, which is our conscious thinking, the mid, which are our emotional side, pictures, stories, people's faces. Use people's faces that are looking on the website to you, not somebody looking off. And also if things are moving in the website, have them go from the corner of the website that's moving from left to right when you're moving. Those are unconscious things that we don't even know when somebody does it wrong, you don't know what doesn't feel right, but those are unconscious things. Other things like from the old brain is like the fear of uncertainty, you know, use that. Don't, 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 um, you, they, a lot of times people will put in their cart, um, for example, there's only three left. That's taking in the old brain, right? Or fear of missing out, FOMO, like people don't want to, don't want to know that they're not going to miss out on something. Those are unconscious things that we don't really think about, but it works in marketing. This leads to Gestalt's design rules, which are about the, the design and the unconscious and what we, similar things on design, it just works. The law of proximity is things are close together. So you'll see that banners are, that are in the same, like if we have services, we'll often have them close together. Um, the law of similarity, objects that will look similar will make all of our headings the same. Because that know, you know with your eye quickly, oh, that's a heading, that's a heading. Oh, that's a menu item. Oh, these are these thumbnails here, they're the blog posts. So you keep things similar. Hoverovers on the menu, keeping it similar. And focal points, what's a good, what's a focal point? Here's another one someone can win, can, can see if they guessed it right. What's one of the main focal points on a website? Your buy button, your call to action button. And the red button often people will have it as. But the thing about buttons, I see a lot of the, the themes and templates out there, they, they put the read mores in buttons. What that starts to do is that starts to confuse people and they start going, oh, everything's a button. And then they don't actually notice your important call to action button. So I always remove the buttons that are not real buttons. For me, buttons should be called to actions. And then the law of past experience is important because um, people are used to things a certain way. And if you change it too much, it's gonna be friction on the website. They may not be able to find it. So you're balancing creativeness with 
following what's the norm because you want it to be simple and easy for people going through your site to find the information they need. I've had clients say to me, no, I want the contact button first. Where do we have the contact button on the menu? It is always on the right side, right? It's always at the end. I'm going to speed that side for you guys because I'm opposite. So that's where it is, that contact button. And if you, people are expecting it to be there. They're also nowadays expecting navigation links down in the bottom of the site. Where's your privacy policy? It's at the bottom of the site, right? So those are the kind of things that you would expect in certain places and try to stay within them. That's what the law of past experience says. And there's some other laws, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that for now. And I want you to remember that your website is a tool. And it's right there in the middle. You've got the sales coming in. Here's your sales funnel, all the leads that everybody said in the things. I want to talk about leads. This isn't a lead generation class, but good content, exceptional content, getting out there, posting it in the right place. If you know your audience and where your audience is, and you put your content in those places, you will get targeted leads. Then you get the leads, they're coming in, they come through the website. SEO also will bring you good leads. And then you've got this engine, this tool that is, if it's set up right with the proper conversions on the proper methods on it, it's going to turn into sales. And this becomes an engine afterwards as you get going. It's a tool to enroll people, to interest them, to book things. You gain trust on your website. It gives you social proof. A lot of things are happening. And here, these are just sort of all of the things, a list I just sort of randomly put off of different things that can be happening on your website. One of the things that is important is it's also a sales progression tool. And I use on my website, um, if I wonder if I have my website still up here, if I can find it. Let me just find my site here. I have um, one of the, think about when you are going through, going, um, when you have something that people ask you for all the time, maybe you should put it on your website. So I used to, oh, see, look at my SSL broke. I got to fix that tonight. See, that's what happens when you don't have SSL. It says it's not secure. So I have packages and package, my packages, I get different ones for different things. I've done packages for all sorts of my different products. This allows me to quickly quote. And by having my packages for different things, and the other thing I did was my processes. I put that there. And another important one that I did recently was my values on my site. And when I did that, I was, it was very, very quick for me when someone phones me, I can easily do a quote on the phone, which may have taken me an hour or two before in the past when I get all the information. Now I know, I know from a, one conversation, this is what you're looking for. This fits within this package and we can get going on a website very quickly. So having these things in place really helps. Uh, uh, Susan, a comment yeah. from um, Martin Crosby. I'm changing yeah. my website assessment from a three to a two. And if Susan goes long, it may become a one. This is excellent <laughs> information. Oh, tell him it's not, it, it's probably, I'm a really good marker. I'll give you a three and a half. So. <laughs> uh, Stuart, we'll and Stuart says, when you're referring to what's on your website, which he cannot see, can't okay. see what she's talking about. Okay. So he, I'm not, am I not sharing the screen? He can't you're, see it? You're sharing a screen, but it's not of your website. Oh, what's sharing? Uh, it's, uh, it, it's a funnel on the left. Okay, the screen, it didn't open up in there. Okay, I was sharing you my website, but you can go look. So sorry about that, guys. I'm just gonna keep on. We'll show, if we've got some time at the end, I'll show you how the packages look on the website. So another thing is we we're talking about is creating this marketing engine here. So as your website gets, starts to use it, think of it as a tool. So that's the mindset we wanna have, a tool that's changing, right? This is your website. It is your marketing asset that you're using. And with this tool, you can have things coming in. You've got your lead magnet on there. You can set up, I have a, a form for a discovery call. This tool comes in, so this is the flow. If, if somebody wants an assessment, they come into this link I give them. 
they arrive on a form, they fill out all these questions about their business. Then it goes to a next page, which has a calendar and they book a time with me. I get notified. I show up two weeks later on the Zoom with them. We have a meeting Then I send them my packages and then we have a deal and it's just gone through. There's only been that small amount of time. In the past, you would be spending all this time with calendaring. Who's had, who remembers the, like having that where you're trying to book a time with somebody and you go back for six or seven emails by the time you organize it. Calendaring is, is a phenomenal way for all of us service businesses to be able to communicate and book those things quickly. Another automation that, that you guys are probably already using is the unsubscribe button on your website. Everybody using that when they got an email, you can unsubscribe. Remember the olden days when somebody unsubscribed? What did you have to do? Anyone remember? You do it manually. You'd have to go to the list. You'd have to take them out. You make a mistake. Somebody gets mad. They send you an email. They're really annoyed. That's the, but this now is totally automated. It's saving us so much time. Um, look for things that are reoccurring things that you do often. And those are the type of things you can think, how can I turn this into a system? Maybe it's content I have on my website. If there's a sales thing I do all the time, um, I could create a video about that, put that on my website. And it's a sales progression tool that I can keep using all the time. So your website isn't just about being a promotional thing or just the place where they buy. It is my sales tool. And I've got, you have all that information. I can be in my car driving around. Somebody calls me and they ask me something. I can say, go to this page on my website. That's where you would find that information. And it helps me sell. I've got that information right there at my fingertips because I can just direct them to the website. And there's, there's automations that are more complicated. You know, when you sign up for something, some lead magnet and you start getting, getting emails galore for the next two or three months. Those are the more complicated funnels, but you don't have to be that complicated. You can still be successful, very successful by having things simple, clear, and reaching your target audience in the right way. Start small with this automation and you just grow as your needs grow and you keep adding in new things as you go along. So I'm going to go back to our journey through time. What I'm seeing right now is that there's those who are waiting for things to go back to normal. And then there are those who are not. It's not going to go back to normal. All of us being here shows that we are we are knowing that this isn't going back to normal. We are taking on digital transformation. We're here networking on Zoom. We're learning about our websites and how we can make them better. And we're ready to, to grow in this new world. As entrepreneurs, we have access to low cost digital communication tools now like Zoom. Things that only, you know, things that nobody could afford back back when, well, so they didn't even have them. I, my father worked for the, the phone system. And I remember he was telling me about video stuff. I think it was in the early, late eighties, early nineties that they were testing it out. And it was, I mean, it was millions of dollars to do that stuff then. Now here we are on Zoom, all of us, it's just amazing. And we have a website that we can build that does things that 10, even 10 years ago would have cost 20 to 30, up to $50,000 or more. The plugins in WordPress are all pre-built and you just start putting the pieces together like Lego. So here we are managing technology and this is where I want you to be. Your website is the house of your business. It is the most important marketing tool you have and you can, as this guy is doing, win big from the comfort of our own home. And that is the end. Thank you. Susan, uh, you certainly have shared your website wisdom with us. You've, you've lift, lifted the veil <laughs> and led us behind the scenes as to how a website designer uh, thinks about a, uh, an assignment. Uh, so on behalf of uh, BBN's members and guests, I thank you. Uh, I thank you very, very much. Uh, now we're going to end the um, recording, but don't go away, uh, attendees, because Susan has an irresistible offer for you. Oh, I should probably keep recording, Roger, because this will go, this is for everybody. I invite you to continue to win online 
Oh, let me share my screen, right? I got to share my screen. I invite you all to join us at our next Grand Connection to where we work together to navigate digital transformation. And I also have a winning website checklist and some resources for everybody. You can go, I will post this in the chat and you can get a full list of what I've talked about, all of the conversion tips. And you can go through your website. It is, I think, seven pages long. <laughs> and you can see what you might be missing or what you can fine tune on your website. So this is, this is, this is for you guys to help you. Win online. Can I stop the recording now? Yes. All right, recording has...